This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Josh Ellerton, Alan Smith and Andy Simcox. Uh, hope you didn't miss us too much last week, Reds. Had a week off because basically it was too warm and we all thought <laughs> there's how much has happened at Oakwell in a week. I mean, there's a few things happened since then, but uh, we thought we'd have a week off anyway. You've been to Cleethorpe, haven't you, Al? I certainly have. I've been sunning it at Thorpe Park. Nice. And it- Eating Barnsley fans and uh, Sheffield United's fa- fans wishing us all the best for the season. And all smiling. Hold on. And all smiling because we'd beaten Sheffield Wednesday in a pre-season ah, friendly. That's why they're in a good mood. Yes, Barnsley have beaten uh, Sheffield Wednesday 2-0 in a pre-season friendly. Um, I don't think that keeper's going to remember that one by Jordan Williams, that goal, to be fair. <laughs> Wasn't the best keeping, but great strike, Jordan. Well done. Um so, yeah, uh, we thought we'd just come on and have a chat. Um, just a, a quick reminder, we said we'd give away some merch on this show. Um, we didn't actually get that many. I think a lot of people, obviously, through summer on holiday and stuff, we didn't get that many comments on merch this time. We usually get, like, crazy amounts, but we only got uh, an handful. So all those people who have uh, said they want a merch, we're going to try and sort you it out. Thanks for being committed and sticking with us through the summer because we know <laughs> it's not always easy to do when you're, you're on holiday and, you know, you think, oh, I'll just have a break from football. We understand that as well for people who don't watch through the summer. Um, but, Andy, um, there has been a few things happen. New goalkeeper kit has been announced. Like Al said, we've each Jeff Wednesday 2 0 in a friendly. We've got a new chief exec. That's a biggie. Uh, other chief execs gone to Forest. That's finally been announced. What a what a shock. We didn't know that were happening. <laughs> and um, most importantly, um, our new gaffer, Marcus Shop, has finally revealed what he's going to be wearing on the touchline. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it's definitely worth checking out the photos on Barnsley's official Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that. Um, we're going with blue hoodie, very chill, cash, cash, cash. He's very cash, isn't he, Andy? Have you seen it? I've not, but I don't care what he wears. He can wear what he wants. He can wear a three-piece suit and a, a tie, or he can wear shorts and a T-shirt for me. It'll get a bit cold in winter, like. But he can wear what he wants. Who cares? Casual. He's, he's got to be better, hasn't it, than he can, um, than he can move about rather than be all, all stiff and all that. Love. You don't want, don't want any of that Southgate, Southgate nonsense. We all ties and three pieces on site. No, I don't want any of that. He wants, he wants to be in T-shirts. Are you still bitter about England not winning Euros? <laughs> no, no, not, not, not at all. Not at all. I thought they did all right. I thought they did all right. I thought, he's upset I thought, that he's not going to the Ed Howard's for, for more uh, evenings out and meals. You, you know, I could still go to my brother, Smith, even though there's no football on. I, I am allowed to go, you know. It's, they don't just invite me if there's football. I choose not to go if there's no football because it, it does me head in. At <laughs> least when it's football... And he moans. I'm used to him moaning about football. If there's no football on and I go, he just moans. And I'm not quite as used to that. It's, I usually like, like him to concentrate on football. But no, I don't mind. I thought they did all right. I thought that first half in the final, we played really well. Best we played, I thought. And then we did. Sadly, I think we did what Barnsley did. I know this is going on about England and I'll get her in a minute. Sadly, I'm going I, to think say what, <laughs> I think they did what Barnsley used to do a few years ago. That, you know, we get a goal up and then we start defending and start. You could see them, and it were inevitable that they were going to equalise because we were going further and further back, gaining more and more of the ball, rather than still going up. We'd have still gone at them. I think we'd have won it, but you know, it's one of the, one of them things. We, we we went back to type. Let's try and let's try not to lose a goal, and 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 we did. And uh, you know, it's a lottery, isn't it? When it gets to penalties, it's just. Um, it's just a lottery. Um, well, Cellini tried to swap shirts before it uh, ended the game, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, there were two. There were two. There were two. That Jorginho, I know. Him, him and Chile, they should have both been off. That referee, that referee were ridiculous. They should have both been sent I think Jorginho's were very close to a red, weren't it? Stood it showing. In Prem, that's a red. In Prem, that's a red. It just definitely. nasty. That were definitely a red. And I think, you can say with professional for. He nearly decapitated him, he got under his shirt that much. No attempt to play the ball. For me, I don't care that he's not three inches off at, off at goal line. That is assault. And he should have been sent off for that. None, none of this. It went to goal scoring opportunity. I don't care. It absolutely did him. And that, anyway, please do not menu for me, Andy, now from now on. That's it, I've done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, lads, we're not here to talk about England. Like that. Just don't tell Joe emotions. he's got to go with pizzas. I'm not going to like... pizza. I'm not handle it, Joe. I don't care. Joe, I, I wouldn't have cared if Italians would have beat us 10-0. I'm not getting all with pizza. I love pizza. It's great. You know, 
Football and food, separate. I can still love the food just because I'm upset that they beat us in Euro final. Um, let's get our way England then, because I think we don't want right. to impress us all again after, you know, we've only just, I've only just got over it. I don't know about y'all lot. Uh, so let's focus on positives, lads. Barnsley, obviously, going to be going for a promotion again this season. We all know that's, uh, that's the aim. Uh, give us a like, Reds, if you're watching the show. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. We're up into it 1,600 before we start the season. Uh, so we'd really appreciate you having <clears> that. Get all your mates subscribing so we can get uh, grow the channel. Um, ah, let's talk about some Barnsley news then. Um, new chief exec. Obviously, whenever we bring someone in like this, we don't really know a great deal about them. So we could read you the, the spiel, the statement from Barnsley about the new chief exec. But instead, what we're going to do is just talk about the fact that it's good that we've got one in quite early early doors, and it seems like we've replaced Dame Murphy, who's gone to Nottingham, Nottingham Forest quite quickly, Al. We have, uh, and as I say, it, it is good for the club that we've got somebody in quick. Uh, but there's, there's that statement come out today, aren't there, about uh, they've uh, stopped the season tickets, haven't they? We've sold 11,000, and they've put them on hold for anybody else who's wanting season tickets, uh, and to put them on a waiting list, which... Is an interesting uh, announcement from football club today, uh, and I don't know how, how what to read into that. I'd have thought that they'd given a bit more information about that. I know they put one out in May to say that if they've got reached uh, eleven thousand, then they'd have to uh, put people on a waiting list. Something to do with how many is allowed into a stadium. So we'll wait for further information from our CEO at club uh, regarding. Uh, this with a season passes. I gave him a topic to talk about, and he, he goes straight to curveballs me straight to another topic. Oh, that's on my list. We're going to do that. We're going to do limited fans and all that, and not being able to buy a season ticket at the minute. But we just wanted your thoughts on chief exec. <laughs> Come on, well, that's off. To club. Give him some... go back to statement out then. That then let us know what's behind it all. I'm sure it's coming. They're busy. They're down in Loughborough at minute or wherever it is. I can't even. What is it? Look at Loughborough training. Yeah. It's but up it's and running, Joe. Camp, mate. Too busy it's, filming it's, stuff. It's practice gearing up for his car park rants. He's got to get into it, hasn't he? He's got, bit by bit, he's got to gear himself up, get a bit of practice in. I've got to get into car park rants, Mr. Simcox. I'm waiting for that, you, you know. Hey, I've just bought my I've just bought my car park pass today, so you know. The good well, thing is home pre-season for his rants, though, isn't he? He's getting it in now. He's got a couple, he's got another couple of weeks. You best believe it'll be there firing all cylinders. There's always Saturday. a silver lining out. Oh, that's a silver lining. If there's no seat, no season tickets at this minute, my brother ain't got one. So if they, if they don't let people in, oh, is I'm, I'm going to have a home free zone. I'm not, I'm not going to have any hassle. I'm going to have a home free zone. It's going to be all right. Sounds... I'm not going to have him outside of me rattling on. Is that an official? So... Is that an official government term? A home free zone, Andy? Yeah. <laughs> not the family zone. It's the home. Free... Yeah. It's going to be. Oh, I'm going to have. There's my grandson at the side of me saying, why has he done that, Grandad? Why has he done that? Is that off why is that offside, Grandad? And all that. And I'll just have to say, Jack, shut up and watch the match. At least I'll not have him banging on if he can't get it again. He's not happy. He's been emailing me today that he's not because obviously <laughs> I've mentioned it to him. He's not even here. He's over in Lancashire visiting his in-laws. So I've mentioned it to him. And uh, he's not happy. He's not an happy bunny. So it'll get sorted. They just need to know that. Uh, we have big crowds because they don't know, do they, at the minute? And I thought, you know, we've had freedom day, haven't we? It's all free now. We'll be sorted. Get a double jab and everything will be sorted in September. You know, it's, it's, it'll go away, won't it? Have well, a look. I'm hoping, you're, me. I'm hoping you're right, Andy, but I'm not sure about that. Um, well, I'm to be not honest, sure, though, lads. I'm honest. <laughs> That's what who's, who's told you that? Who's told you that? I hope it's someone who's a reliable source. <laughs> Boris. Oh, you said reliable source. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know a reliable source. Anyway, no, anyway, sorry. let's sorry. let's not do politics. Don't get poli we don't well, do you politics. Well, you brought it up. Show. You brought it up, beards up. No, I shouldn't have done that. Not to me. It up. Not in me. Uh, I didn't mean to. Follow, follow all guidance. Um, right, okay. Um, what I was going to say is, though, on a serious note about this um, this statement that Alan's mentioned that the club's put out uh, around. Not so, you know, putting a temporary pause on uh, the season passes at the minute. I think it's sensible, gents, because we don't know what's going to happen with all seriousness. We had a bit of a joke, but we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, for the 11,000 of us and, the, you know, all what, you know, people watching this show and people who've got season passes uh, and us in the room, like, 
it's probably a good thing because if they went and sold 20,000, I wish we would, it would be amazing to see it well with 20,000 fans. But if they did, and then we could only have 5,000 in each week, we'd all be a bit annoyed that we were having to go every once, every four or five weeks, wouldn't we? So realistically, it's probably a wise move, maybe. And people, if, if things change and it's better than we expect, I'm sure the club will quickly say, yes, let's get more folk in and let's get more season passes sold because 11,000... Wow, that's a, an amazing, amazing effort, as I've said before, Josh. So I think it's well. Let's think, well, let's think about it. You've got five thousand seats though, for that for away fans. So what are we? Twenty three thousand like now ground. So that puts you what eighteen thousand. Half at West End and up, and so I'd say that might be two thousand at most. So you're down to sixteen then, and then it depends what we're going to. You, I don't think we'd sell sixteen thousand season tickets, but if we sell a few more, then it probably will be full from our end for people who buy on the day and pay uh, and parent gate or, or buy for a game. I think if we did sell any more, you start getting a bit tight as to whether you could like parent gate or if you'd have to have a ticket in advance and things like that. And they're, they're one, like when you buy a, a ticket for a single game, it's more expensive than a season ticket. So clubs making a little bit more money on that as well. So for me, it makes, it makes, from a business perspective, it makes sense for us to monetize it in that way and maybe put a pause on it for now. There's obviously the coronavirus, which is still probably a looming factor on why that cap is there. But I think in the context of how many seats we've actually got for home fans, it does make sense at 11,000 just to cap it, see, wait, wait, see what happens coming out with guidance and things like that and then move from there. Just for the fans who haven't seen it, just so in case you're not 100% sure what we're talking about, because I know Alan sort of jumped in. Never lets me introduce stuff, does he? Uh, anyway, it's the official statement. We have taken the decision at this stage of the process to suspend sales of 2021-22 Reds memberships, which is basically season tickets. We are currently processing all cards for those memberships sold to date and will temporarily be suspending sales. Supporters yet to purchase their 21-22 membership can record their interest with the box office here at Oakwell, who will be happy to contact you when sales resume. So if you are one of those fans who you were going to get a season ticket, which maybe you were saving up your pennies or just waiting until it was closer to the season starting and uh, not got round to it, I'd just say get, get in with the box office and let them know you're interested because I think that if things do look up in terms of the coronavirus restrictions and stuff, I think we would probably be more, you know, I think they'd be happy to sell more season tickets. Also, I mean, Joe, I think... Uh, it's going to be epic, like Josh says, next season. And also, Joe, I think what it is to try and get people into their own seats as near as, damn it, that, that's the other factor. So, so like Andy and his family... We'll all be part, and we me, Jed, Kate, Joe, Neil. You know, we, we we should be all in those groups. Do you think we need a bigger stadium now? <laughs> I know it's oh, a real, real that, big no. debate to come up with, but oh, do you no. think? No. <laughs> No. Should I just put a clause on that? Have I just opened the worms? And I don't know. I've just well, thought. Lord, just, let me I would. Leave no, I'm not leaving. I'll just start talking like that. I just edit this piece out what you've just said and just we'll just start from a different way, if I'm being honest. Well, let me what, rephrase what, it. Forget what I just said, Reds. Do you think we need to just fix that right inside uh, West Ham just so we can have a few more thousand? <laughs> no. What do you reckon, Josh? Jo Joe says <laughs> we should leave Oakwell. I didn't I say that. I did that. not I say that. that. I, I just suggested that. that we might need that, a bigger... May, might need to expand Oakwell is what I was kind of suggesting. not the way I'm going to tell it. <laughs> I'm going to tell. I know. I know what I'm going to say. You said you're a disgrace. It's no, Josh's never... fault. He was doing his maths, saying, "Well, if we have this oh. amount and we have this amount, then we're probably not going to have enough room for anybody else." I'm thinking, well, you know, he got yeah, his we... business model head on. Nothing wrong with that, Joe. We're a business haircut now. That's it. I'm all about numbers and stats. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't to... forgot about that haircut, mate. Chief of signings next week. Mm. Not without it. We're coming on to that. Phil Foden. <laughs> oh, right, man. we're going. No, we're not. We're not leaving. Get, get lost about leaving Oakwell, Joe. It's not, I never it's said not leaving Oakwell. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. It's not happening, Joe. So let you were trying to move us to Sheffield, and I could, I could sense it in your voice. You're trying to move us to Sheffield or Rotherham. Tell him, I can't, I'll, I can't. Tell him oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. He's going for Wakefield Leeds. I'd said, Joe, it's closer to mm. home. 
Are you three telling us dislikes on this show? Or what by trying to pull me? Like Rotherham United, are you three 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 Sheffield. What if someone skipped just two minutes before this bit and didn't watch <laughs> the opening bit of this seg? They're probably just going to think that this is actually a real conversation where I've actually. No, they'll think them. you're a wrong one. That's what they'll think that you're a wrong one, <laughs> and they'll not be far off. Will they? Well, they all know that Talking already, like mate. That. So they all know that already. So anyway, we've got a new goalkeeper kit. What do we think to that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eh, another. Be- oh, that's very good. It looks smart, in it? It look, really looks smart. You know, it's it's very colourful, black and multicoloured. You know, it's it's all right. If they all go stepping goes together, it'd be like a brick wall. It is quite a nice. It is quite a nice kit. So it's for those fans who again haven't seen it. It's um, it's black with like blue lines down, yellow lines down. It's quite. It looks quite techy, to be fair. I like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's cool. It'll be us on a day like today, though, wearing that. Oh, yeah. I want one to be wearing it. Good yeah. luck to Jack, to Brad Collins and Jack, and Jack Walton in that on a warm day. They've That's got my say. respect. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I've got respect for us for doing this on a hot day. I wish we'd have gone to the pub. We should have gone to Garrison, lads, because I'm absolutely swelled. I'm sweating like mad here. Have you seen me? I'm yeah. dripping. We've had th- oh. I've been, I've been we've had thunderstorms and rain. It stopped now and it's red hot again. But oh, it's just so sticky, isn't it? When you try, it's to... all right, lads. I've got a slate loose today. Oh, it's right. tough rules. Not just the day, Alan. Let's Not do... just the day, love. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that. I don't, I don't want any rain. Needs to get that room oh, fixed now. Oh, Joe. You know when you you know when you put this out, Joe, and you get ah. it on Facebook and all, you've got to put headline on. Alan says he's got a slate loose. Well, I usually be, try that's to go to the most newsworthy line. thing, Andy, but I don't think that's very newsworthy. Uh, <laughs> no. So what else is coming up, Reds? Um, new executive. New it's executive. We new Shall we executive. have a chat about that? Just quickly. That's really, really good. That's, we, we, and all I'm saying is, do we know that it's not Tony Carlson? Because I've not seen Tony Carlson and the new chief executive in the same room at the same time. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's not Tony Carlson because they're both Swedish. Who knows? It might be under an assumed name for all I know. So if it's if it's not t- Tony needs to let us know if it's him or not. Go Please, on, Tony, let us know. Um, I don't think it is Tony. Maybe it's his friend. I don't know. Uh, he's called Khalid Al Ahmed. I think is the way to pronounce his name. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But um, yeah, the information that the club put out, it's just very impressive stuff. It mentions a master's degree in business and stuff and lots of other fancy words that I'm not going to. Put out there but he sounds very very like he's got a lot of good experience and um i know i've kind of joked about that a little bit but i genuinely i genuinely think that anybody that could brings in now just trust them to bring in the right person because we've had so many decent people at the minute um josh how important is it to get him in quite early and not like two weeks into the season uh, i think it from a transfer perspective um he said he got links across most of Europe and things like that. And it just opens up other markets for us. I mean, we saw that with Dave Murphy bringing in DK and just his understanding of the MLS and how contract works and just having them links there. Um, I think it is important because it allows us to, especially with the way in which we sign players, it allows us to tap into that untapped potential of um, other players. Like you see with Mads Anderson now came across, didn't, didn't, didn't have the best first season, but now... There's not many play. There's not many fans who'd want him to leave, and he's a regular starter. There's not many. Ty- there's not many people that wouldn't have him start starting week in week out. And I think just having that deeper knowledge and understanding of those leagues and who's good in those leagues, who's decent, who's a decent player, it it massively helps. Um, and I think I think Dame Murphy start started building that network, and hopefully, the new chief exec can build on that and and progresses even further. Al, is his first job to keep the players we've got, basically? Or, is, you know, is that number one priority on his, his list has just got to be to make sure he keeps all those players in the building? To me, yeah. Keep, keep what we've got and uh, fetch a couple in uh, to uh, bolster the squad up, isn't it? But start on uh, 7th of August at Cardiff. Um, uh, yeah, let, let, let's see what happens. Let's see where he takes us and... Let's see uh, if he's more open and we see more of him than what we did to Dane. Because uh, Dane, although Dane were at club, we didn't see a lot of him, did we, out and about. It would all be behind closed doors, which I think Barnsley fans like a more personal touch and, 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 and 
I mean, it's fair to say he did spend quite a lot of his time during a lockdown where we were told we had to stay behind us to us. Just to defend yeah, him a little bit that's on that. When, that's where coming, but when he first came in, it, 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 you didn't see much of him, did you? Like Invisible Man. I, I know what you're saying, Al. I just, I just don't think Dane should have risked getting arrested during the lockdown just to see you. <laughs> we can now if he wants. I don't know if he can play football against you. Well, that's me, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. well, I just any slates falling from my roof. The only, the only thing you're too I busy. You've got to fix them. <laughs> good, good luck to Dana, Joe. For me, I think, I think, I think it's a bit of a shame that we haven't really put much out. You know, it's, it's been announced by them, and we have we have we still not said anything. I don't think we've said anything unless something's come out. Now, you know, some some weak will, and I think that's a real shame because he always what a couple of years. And it's, yeah, it's done all right. And I think I think anybody that spends some time in a senior position, don't know if there's been a fallout, don't know, don't care really. He's gone. But I think we could have said thank you for everything. I and, think you know, it's difficult. It, it in out on the first yeah. Yeah. On you've, the first changed, you've, you've changed you through these lockdowns. And I remember when you used to be good riddance. Where's that gone? <laughs> Where's that gone now? Now he's now, like, oh, I want a statement. Yeah. Oh, he's got, oh, he's, he's oh, gone Dave. to my mate at Notts Forest. I'm trying to make sure I get on Notes Forest podcast. Do not mention that. That <laughs> side. Do Don't not start. mention. Sorry. What's that on Mr. Door on the door? Side that, that's enough for me. Oh, Alan, you can't send out to anybody. Andy, no. you know, Andy, at least he's he's got that camaraderie with our fellow championship clubs, goes on Blackburn one and goes with Mr. Dawes and Nottingham Forest. You, Al, you're only turning up when it's bumming talk sport. Not bothered when it comes to oh, can I can you just pop on this other ch- championship fan podcast and you know excuse help me out, help him out you know help, help the, the little guy who was on the Swansea pon- podcast for the semi final no exactly uh, another big game you're not you're not there for Blackburn away mid season when it's freezing cold and he's there though isn't he part timer yeah. and, and remember remember I mean this technically year, he's on please. Zoom Josh so he don't feel cold but yeah well you know which adds to it doesn't it. <clears throat> Remember this, so our, our on Norwich podcast, and they've gone up. I wrote I wrote an article for Brentford podcast, and they went up. So anybody that wants anybody that wants me, you guaranteed promotion. I'm and not Josh, like Alan. And just, Josh, just to make it clear, Talksport have now dumped Alan since since we didn't get anywhere after they've dumped him like like that. It's, it's just like it's, it's yesterday's chip paper, Alan. Now, isn't it? It's not even chip paper. It's chips have been adding it, and they've been put it bin. I'll tell you oh, something. Oh, very on, nice at lunchtime oh. in Mabel Thorpe yesterday. Very nice in that newspaper, Andy. Very nice. <laughs> Eating off your own face, Al. <laughs> licking it, lad. Licking it. Okay. This is, I don't know where this conversation's gone, but I'm going to bring it back into the room because I don't want to hear any more whatever just whatever was happening there. Um, yeah. So other things happening, Reds. Um, there's a season, I know there's a season launch party in there, the garrison. Um, Alan's already got his tickets, of course he has, because it's Al. Uh, we're going to see if we can, um, maybe one of us can sneak in with him as well. Uh, so hopefully if you are going to that, for Reds Reserve Plus members, I know it's only an exclusive club, but uh, we'll see if we can get some stuff on that uh, so we can let you know how the night went. Uh, what else is on my list? Let's have a look, lads. It's a bit, a bit, a bit, bits and bobs tonight. I wanted to mention Ben Williams. Uh, great to see that he's back out on the grass uh, after what was a horrendous injury. So, you know, really hoping Ben's going to have a good yeah. season for us as well. Um, style, not Callum Styles, but style of play. So from the first couple of friendlies, it seems that uh, Marcus Shop is going to be playing out from the back. Um, what do we think, lads? I know we talked a little bit. We mentioned that when he first signed that that might be a slight concern to the style, but are we are we feeling a bit more confident on it now, or do you think the team's in a better position to do it after a couple of seasons in Championship? What do you what do you reckon, lads? I think it depends what we do. I've got no problem with us having you know pa- passing more. You know, I, I do think last year we we pressed well and we got we, we got into them and that were really really good. But sometimes we had chance to put a foot on ball and play it to a player um, instead of just ogging it forward. And I found that sometimes disappointing. Sometimes it worked, but it was disappointing. It went a great style at times, and we got caught out with that. My biggest worry is if we're playing it out from the back all the time, if it's like pass it to the, the centre half that stood aside here and all that. Even play, teams like Manchester City and your Barcelona, all them that do it, 
they get caught out. We don't want it near our nets. We want it away from our nets. Now, whether whether that's ogging it up front from the goalkeeper and then and then trying to get on second balls or first ball edit and all that lot, that, that's my personal preferred style, unless there's an obvious outlet. But if it's just this is how we're going to do and we're going to try and play around opposition players in our penalty area. I'm I'm too old. I'm I'm going to need to take. I'm going to need to get some some extra blood pressure tablets than this. I'm not sure I can have any more than I've got. So you know that 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 worries me a bit. If we start prattling about with it in our own penalty area, if it's if it's purposeful, I can I can see the benefit of it. What I've seen in the in the highlights of the two friendlies, everything we do seems to be purposeful. It seems to be quick. I know they're only friendlies, and it's you know players. You know we're only Rochdale, playing Chef Wednesday, mate. We can't really judge. Oh, it, right, Rochdale, that. you know. And I, like you said about Ben Williams, I was pleased for Ben Williams because there were a few times when when it showed him in second half, he was quick. You know, he got ball, brought it inside, and he was very, very quick and uh, pulled away from players. So, you know, sometimes it's going to come up, but we were passing it quickly. It weren't like, I, I can't I can't be doing with all this, pass it to centre half, pass it to full back, pass it back to centre half, to other centre half, to other full back, back to goalkeeper. Honour that. Oh, I shall fall asleep. But, oh, well, even in... February, I'll fall asleep. I'll get wrapped up, obviously. Even that, but if it's purposeful, I want I want us to pass it. I want just to clog it. Purposeful passing, and it's sharp. It looks sharp. Pre-season, you know, when we get tired part way through the season, that you know we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I, I certainly want us to pass it like it seems as though we are. So that that'll be a good thing for me. Josh Valerian well, Ismail had his critics, um, yeah. not for his results, but he did have his critics for how we played, mainly from the opposition. Um, I might add, but um, are you are you happy with that change of style? Do you think Shop needs to maybe just change it a bit and try not to be too dramatic with his changes straight off, just till the lads get get to grips with it? I think it, I mean it makes sense to implement and put his own twist on it during preseason because it gives an opportunity to see if we actually are capable of doing that, and it would show from the results of the last two preseason friendlies that we have. And from what I've been reading, it's not like we're overplaying it either. I think we were as own victims of doing that. We overplayed it at the back. We make a mistake. It seems like sometimes when it is a bit tight, we have just hit channels and and followed it up with an eye press, which is like a nod the hat to Valerian Ismail style. Um, so I think if we do get that balance right, then I think we're in a good place because I, I do think everyone's come on a little bit. Um, and I think we've got ball playing players in there. You've got the creativity now, Styles, in the middle. <clears throat> You've got um, the tenacity and work rate of Ramal Palmer at the side of him. And I think we've got we've got a very good balanced team to implement that style because then if we do have to hit channels, you can hit ca- a big ca- target of Carl Morris who's more than likely going to have a height, height advantage over any fullback that's marking him as well. So I think we I think we could be onto a winner with this style of play. I just think we need to ensure that when it does come to competitive games, that we're making them in-game tweaks to suit what we need to do. Do we need to go forward faster? Then let's hit channels. Do we need to build up slower? Let's do that and get that balance right. Because I think that's the thing when Stendhal were in charge, that we didn't really have that balance. It it were kind of, it were kind of a bit naive to the fact they style weren't working, but still proceeded to bomb fullbacks forward and then get caught out on a break. Um, so I think if it gets that balance right when we first start the competitive games, then I think we should be all right. Yeah, I think that's a really good assessment. I think the key word there is is balance, isn't it? It's it, it's it's Definitely. fine to play. We want to see us team play football. Of course, we do. We want to see them pass it ball around in a really good way. Uh, but what we don't want to see is overplaying it back, taking forever to pass it and then getting caught out and conceding goals, which we have seen it past. Al, um, do you agree with all that, mate? Uh, totally. It was great as well on uh, to see it, uh, highlights, to see Clark Adore getting back in favour and scoring. I mean, that's the first time he's scored, isn't it, since uh, keeping us up at Brentford in the final minute. So, un- unbelievable. So, we're going to see a lot more, I think, with Clark Adore. Uh, because Ishmael never picked him or it, it wasn't in his system, was he? So uh, the, I'm looking forward to seeing Clark Adore and, and uh, a lot of other players playing under this style of uh, slots. And uh, it says they want to play it out front back, play on floor, pass and move. And if we see that to a high standard, I'm looking forward to it. And... Uh, the fitness coach or the sports scientist 
uh, at Loughborough says they're working hard on the stamina and, and the fitness levels uh, to get everything in, in 90 minutes. So let's see. Let's see on 7th of uh, August in competitive football uh, where we go. And we're better to go and try and try and uh, play our his style at Cardiff away. Yeah, that is going to be interesting, isn't it? I mean, keeping it on the floor against Cardiff is probably always a good idea, I think, <laughs> to be honest. Um, did any of y'all see that uh, video? You guys might have seen it as well. Um, of the Danny Love for training and uh, Jordan Williams getting absolutely soaked by Liam Kitchen with the ice cubes. Anybody seen that? Oh, well, not yet. oh it's brilliant. He's just got a bag of ice and he just goes up to him. And obviously, it's boiling not in it. So, it, you know, just chucks it over him and it's, yeah. Yeah, could imagine he weren't too pleased, but it's, it shows that lads seem to be having a really good time down there training together. Good banter as always. So it's funny, isn't it? We talk about all the changes throughout the summer, and some fans think, "Oh, we're not going to do as well." And sometimes get you know, it can be a little bit of doubt creeps in. But when you see the lads just having a good time, it just reminds me actually we've got such a great team. We've not really lost that much from it, apart from obviously Daryl, who we know we were going to lose anyway, more than likely, and Alex, who, you know, gutted that we lost him, but we knew it would come in. So, so far, I don't want to jinx it, but I think we're, we're looking good. We're looking good, guys. Yeah, and also, well, Sky have just announced, we, we knew we were on against QPR, live on Sky, but they've announced now that <clears throat> on 15th of September, we're live on Sky on Wednesday evening at Stoke City. Alan's like a constant news bulletin, isn't he? He's like us read all over feed at bottom. You know, I'll be talking about something. He just jumps in and goes, and this has just been announced. He's like, he's like, it's like Jim White. <laughs> like, look, why not? If I can't get on talk sport, I'll talk all over. I'll read all over. What more do you want? That's what it is. He's trying to get on a news channel. He's trying to get back on talk sport. That's all it is, Joe. That's I all think it is. Going, going back to what you just said there, Joe, about signings, like when you think, Clark Adore didn't really play much last season. Ben Williams injured all season. Liam Kitchen, he were injured when we signed him. That's three players there that... Jordan they, Williams only came in last few weeks. Yeah, like, in essence, they are going to be a bit like new signings, especially Liam Kitchen, because he only played, what, five minutes against Swansea away? Like, he didn't really get very long, and then he scored at Rochdale, and he's been solid throughout. And then there's the few youngsters which have been playing pre-season who've been impressing as well. So I think, at the minute touch wood that we don't lose anyone else I don't think I'd be that disappointed if we didn't sign anyone I wouldn't, I wouldn't be majorly disappointed I think it's about quality over quantity Thank for me you. gents wow. I'm, I'm, I'm with Josh I think maybe if we as long as we bring one more in I think it's the striker we were looking at um, what's his name Obi Obi was it Olar I can't remember how to pronounce it but I think he was one of one of the players we were looking at Andy. Schlopf also said he wanted another midfielder. Yeah. So maybe two, but that would that'd do it for me. I'd be happy with them, with just two more. Yeah, I found it interesting that, the, I don't know if it were both much, but certainly against against Sheffield Wednesday, Clark Adua played up front, if you like, on the, on the right-hand side of the, of the top three, which is interesting because it's, you know, people just think of him as a left-back or a left-wing back. You think, well, how def you know, how de defensive-minded is he? He's obviously skillful. So you know, it's 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 an, a new eyes on a player. It, it, we'll we'll see, and I, I, we always know we always we've always thought there's a good player in there, an outstanding player in there. And I th I thought we'd lose him to be honest, because you know if you're not you want to play football, don't you? If he's not going to play, he's going to want to shift. Hopefully, he's he's going to get a game. You know, I I, I do think we've got some decisions to make on some players because, like you've said, that like like Josh has said, we've got some players that have, if you like, come back that have. Are not new signings, but there's three players there that are, or four coming into the into the first team fold properly, if you like. But we, we've got a number of players that haven't been making it over the last couple of years, and we, we need to make a decision on whether or not um, they're going to go out on loan, whether or not they're going to leave. Because you can't just keep adding. I know we've lost, to, you know, lost to you know Michael Solbauer. I think we've done the recent, the right thing, letting him go back to his family in um, on the continent, Germany, Austria, Germany, as he stands. Uh, so I think that I think that's a good idea. I think that's really a, a reasonable and a fair thing to do. Um, but the rest is it's what it is. I, I, I do think we need to create a bit more space. There. I think there might be a few, a couple more going on. I hope it's not some of our big names. I hope it's the ones that aren't that we're not sure are they going to quite going to be there. I've not really seen much of, uh, of George Miller. No idea if he's any good. Pre-season he always seems to play in right wing back, and then we don't see him again. So that's you know it's a bit disappointing that either play him or 
it, 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 that, that lad at his age needs to be playing football, whether that's on loan or what, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I think you're right. There's a few that probably will go out on loan. Andy probably just <clears> shops <throat> probably wanting to have a look at him before before answer. So I think you're right. We'll probably see a bit of movement in those areas. Uh, but I'm quite happy. I think as long as we keep all the the, the ones we've got at the minute, um, the main bulk of the squad, we finish fifth. Remember, lads, we finished fifth last season. So if they can do it last season, why can't they do it again? And I'm just excited for another another campaign. Like and we talked right? last last time. We did show about who's going to be captain, and it looks as though it's going to be Coley, doesn't it? Called it. <laughs> yeah. I'm good yeah. for that one. <laughs> yeah, but in all fairness, though, Alex been Alex been holiday. Did you come back from oh, Euros? Oh, you on, you on. he got played, though, has he? Although I do, I do agree with you. I do think it will be Corley, but Ellie can't play yet, so game benefited doubt. Ellie might get a nod. I think we need to do that thing Doncaster did this, where they have like a club captain and then like a captain captain. We've done it, Bobby Assel and Steele. Well, I think we need to go back to that because I think Corley deserves it for his loyalty to the club, and then Ellie deserves summit as well. <laughs> yeah, but who, who's, that's wrong. Well, well, I mean, that's how a captain and vice captain works. I'm not sure if you've, uh, I don't know if sure if you're familiar with this concept. Joe, I've always been a captain, Josh. I don't that's know. What what vice captain is. That's you in it. You're vice captain, aren't you? Well, yeah, vice captain normally runs team anyway. From what I've heard, <laughs> that's basic to side you. I know, I know how it works. Mm, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I think we should, uh, I think we should leave it there because I'm, uh, I feel like I'm in a sauna to be honest, sat in this boiling hot room with windows well, shut. Captain John Castigo, then Josh won't we? And look, uh, we'll have to. A superhero, but Doesn't then he's off in a flash now, isn't he? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Al, Al, you go fix your roof, mate, and we'll catch you next week, Reds. <laughs> uh, we should probably do another show next week. Uh, for them who, who did put in for merch, we'll try and get some out to you. Uh, so thanks for commenting and give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Catch you next week, you Reds.